Welcome to the fourth video comprising of footage taken on the 5th of August 2018. Rather than showcase the trains this time, I've decided to talk about the operating positions at the SR7 mil group and the equipment. We start off at Smithfield. The small Hammond and Morgan controller, which you can see on the left, actually runs a shunter which is positioned above the lever frame and it will be coming into view shortly. Pictured is the Smithfield control panel which is largely conventional. The LEDs on the lower part of the panel are set by the positioning of the points and these connect the relevant controller to that section of track. The upper section of the control panel consists of a, a couple of switches and a number of LEDs. The switch on the left transfers the green controller to operate the turntable and the six green LEDs on the right hand side indicate the positions of the points. Above the layout, as well as the clock and the signalling diagram, there is also a mirror to assist the drivers in seeing trains behind the meat warehouse. This also conceals the lever frame, which is, consists of levers that operate on small micro switches. Moving now into what we call the old shed, we now see the control panel at Southwark Goods Yard, and to the right is the control panel at Southwark Goods Junction. Again, this is conventional. Um, the LEDs are switched by relays, which are attached to the baseboard in a row underneath and there are four controllers here. Two of them are modular controls handhelds like uh, Smithfield and two are fixed. The electrical sections for these two areas are largely divided into four in a cross pattern but everything is mainly under the control of uh, the Southwark uh, Goods Junction signalman and his control panel. The lever frame is actually built into the rear of the canal transshipment shed and it's a 25 lever lever frame. Signalman and driver at Southwark Goods Junction also have the benefit of an external camera and a monitor. Running immediately around from Southwark, we now see Seacole Row Locomotive Depot. This is the control panel pictured ahead. And to the right, Great Victoria Street. Great Victoria Street has two controllers and a 20 lever lever frame. The three controllers are connected to the track via the position of the points, much the same as Southwark and Smithfield are. And like Southwark, the driver and the signalman here have the benefit of a monitor and a camera, which has been recently modernised. The Great Victoria Street panel has two controllers and one at Seacole Row. The LED indications are set by the position of the points, although there are a few little quirks with this location that the driver has to be careful of. However, it is soon to be rebuilt. Moving into the new shed, we now see the control panel at Coulston Coal Concentration Depot. This is controlled by a microcontroller and is completely different to the older panels in the old shed. Here is the NX, which is a genuine British Rail NX recovered from Slough and Reading. And believe it or not, there are 118 24 volt bulbs contained in this. At present, the NX only displays the route set, but shortly I'll be connecting track circuits so it will give a full indication of the progress of the train and train annunciators. Coulston C has a 25 lever lever frame with three spares. Fixed controllers in the new shed are of a different type to the old shed. They're basically thyristor based and they dissipate less heat. 
any controller in the new shed which has a red dot on its control knob is increased sensitivity and these are currently being evaluated for permanent modifications. Turning around from Causton C, we now see the control panel at Bexhill Station. The control panels in the new shed are largely for indication only, and you may notice the reduced number of isolating switches on these panels. This is because most of the isolation is done by in conjunction with the signals. There are three controllers of the new type here, a 25 lever, uh, lever frame and a 10 switch switch panel. There's also a three lever ground frame. Directly opposite the Bexhill station panel is the Bexhill goods panel. This panel is set up like a conventional route setting panel. The switches along the bottom operate the points. There are no signals involved and there are very few isolating switches. The controllers here are interesting. There's one modular controls one which you can see at the end of the control panel. But there is also a blue railways one which is can be operated from a mobile phone. Now we move to Causton A, which is confined to a rather tight location in the far corner of the new shed. As you can see, it has a 40 lever lever frame and the small aluminium panel to the left of the lever frame controls who has control over platforms three and four, either Causton A or Causton C. The associated control panel and controllers uh, are mounted to the left of the lever frame. Again, there are four controllers of the new thyristor type, and these have been mounted in a new case recently. And this is the only control panel that I have managed to get working on the new system. There are still some indications to get working in this panel. I haven't had a chance to complete it yet. And further to the left of this panel, there are two more controllers that control the loop lines that run behind the operators who sit in that location. Thank you for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed this short presentation. And if you have any comments, please post them online.